This is Hockey Talk. It's time for the Gambler's Match Game. <laughs> we are back to play the uh, match game here on WNFL. It's Hockey Talk. Jason Abic along with Scott Jewett. Pat Mickish in the house. And, of course, our two uh, contestants tonight, I guess. Mark Michaelis, Brett Gruber. First and foremost, guys, congratulations on a big weekend in Omaha, and welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Mark, anything to add? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so we got four scenarios for you tonight. We're going to run through them, but first and foremost, you know, Coach talked about, Mark, you going through a little bit of slump in the beginning part of the season. You now lead the league in assists. Talk a little bit about, you know, your progression this year and how you got out of that slump and, and now became the leader of, of assists. Um, those slumps, ha I mean, first time ever happened to me. I know other players who, who went through that. But, um, I mean, I had a, my family, my dad, and the coaches helped me going through that. And uh, finally I scored after, I think, 12 games. But uh, you st I still remember that goal. It was, um, you know, one of those goals you, you remember going through a slump and then finally finish that. Yeah. No, I mean, that's a tough thing to go to. And, you, you know, you come in from last year as the leading scorer and then to have that. I mean, that's a lot of, you know, mental stuff to go through and, and whatnot. So I applaud you for getting through that and... It was, yeah. I mean, the assists were right, but uh, just couldn't score. Um, you know, guys always told me not cheat the game, and uh, mm -hmm. I didn't cheat it. Um, got rewarded then at the end. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. I'm, I'm excited for these. I, I pulled up these four scenarios. Of course, Brett, you are a veteran of this show, so. Yeah, I'm a veteran. You're, you're probably the only one out of the team that carried an entire show with Scott and myself. Yeah. So, I mean, and you're back right away. Yeah, back right away, ready for action. All right, let's get down to it. Here's the deal. So, we got four scenarios. We're going to see if they answer correctly. If it's a match, I'll ding my, my bell here. And then now uh, we'll go to scenario number two. Let's go to one, though. And these are all hockey scenarios. So, number one, this is a lot of reading, so bear with me. You're at home during Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals. Your most beloved team is playing, and they are tied 3-3 in the third period. We've, we've all been there with, with, score, uh, with different events. There are five minutes left on the clock, and the opposing team scores. In a fit of rage, you stand up, start yelling, and accidentally kick the coffee table. You definitely broke your leg. It hurts like a son of a gun. Now, here's a question for you. Do you wait the remaining five minutes in pain, or do you listen to it on the radio as you drive yourself to the hospital? Uh, for me, I mean, it depends on how bad my leg is hurting, but for me, it'd be really hard to turn away a Stanley Cup final game seven because I'm a big hockey fan, obviously. So I think I'd, I think I'd wait it out and keep the pain for a little bit and watch that five, last five minutes. What do you think, Mark? Uh, same for me. Um, no, I, I mean, every playoff game, you just can't leave and listen to the radio. It just can't happen. There you go. And, and Scott, we were talking about this. And Pat, you guys are tough players. You'd say, hey, you would even play on a broken leg, wouldn't you, if it was Game 7 of the Stanley Cup? I don't know how tough Cup? I was, but I wouldn't be leaving that bench. It, uh, for one, if I kick the coffee table, you know, it's going to hurt. But, I mean, that's Game 7 of the Stanley Cup. I'm, I'm not leaving. I'm not an athlete. I usually kick the coffee table when I'm mad at the kids. Same and thing. You can't leave. You can't, can't leave. Well, if it's in the third period, Scott's probably not able to drive anywhere because he's probably had a couple drinks along the way, so he's got to wait for Corinne to drive him there anyway, so we're, it's better if he just stays at home at that point. I'm not leaving the bench, Coach. I don't think at this point. I, I don't want to leave. I don't know what league you're playing, but if you're having drinks on the bench, I want to play in that league. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. We'll get a match right off the bat. Number two. Now, this is one that I had to throw in here. Your teammate starts doing uh, Hanes underwear commercials on television, on your television screen during breaks. Do you lose respect for him, or do you say at least he's getting paid? I mean, um, come on. Yeah, I mean, I, it really depends on the guy, to be honest. But honestly, like, not only at least he's getting paid, but I'm going to gain respect for him. Because that, that takes that takes a lot of guts to do that. So. Is there always that one guy on the team that will do something like this for, for money? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think I think there's like a handful of those guys who will do that. Some of the guys just like being the center of attention. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Mark? Do you, do you feel the same way? I do. Um, I, I wouldn't lose respect. They're, uh, I mean, I see them in the locker room every time without clothes. So, <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't lose respect for sure. <laughs> That's well put. I, I don't know. I would, it would be a little bit of a... I, I think it would be great as a teammate because then you have something to razz on them a little bit about. Yeah, I, I don't... Any team I've ever played with, I don't care what you do away from the rink. I really don't. But when you're at the rink and you're on my, you know, we're teammates, you know, then if you're 
maybe if you put pictures in your locker of yourself modeling those, I might question you. <laughs> that's but, fair. Fair? Fair. Right. That's fair. Pat, Pat said that's fair. You guys, it's right on the money with number two. Let's go to scenario number three. People seem to have a fascination with goal horns. If the team you played for changed theirs to a sound of an average bedroom alarm clock sound, would you guys complain? So if you were to score that goal and uh, alarm clock would come up, would you guys complain? I would, yeah, um, definitely. I mean, now, because we're pretty good at home, so uh, <laughs> goal horn is part of our, uh, you know, our, the the wins we have at home, so uh, I would definitely complain then, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm the same way, and whenever we score, the lights go off, so, and if I heard an alarm clock, it'd remind me of waking up in the morning, so I really wouldn't like that. I'd, I'd like to stick to our goal horn. Now, as a, as a football fan, and I want to ask you guys as, a, as an opposing team, so... I don't like the Minnesota Vikings, so every time they do something right, that stupid horn comes on. Do do do, whatever. So, is there a uh, is there a team like so? You're in a say in Omaha this last weekend, and they do their little goal celebration. They didn't do it often, but if they were to do their goal celebration, would you guys say this this is awful? Yeah, I mean that would really bug me. I don't know about you, Mark. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I remember the Kelowna, the Kelowna Spartans. They're now the Kelowna Rockets, but playing against them, we lost twelve to one, and they played uh, Gary Glitter Rock and Roll. I still hear that in my sleep sometimes. Now, I mean, twelve goals, you just hear it over and over. It's like shut that song up. Have you ever been in that situation, Pat? I took a beating from Michigan when I was playing at Michigan Tech at Joe Louis Arena, and I had that fight song for Michigan in my head for months. It's after. awful because you just can't get it out of your and, head. And it was just—I mean, it was over and over. <laughs> and over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that was a tough one to go through, and so I mean, like, but you want your own building to have that effect yep. on people as well. I mean, like. We want our crowd. We want our our little noises and and things that people have to listen to in our building. We want it to be a pain. You know, I mean, it's just exactly that people don't enjoy and make it a tough environment. No, it's it's funny you guys kind of bring that up though, and I want to ask all you guys this, and especially as coaches, um, you always remember the games you lose or should have won, and not the games that you win. Is that true? I've heard it time and time again from coaches. You always for or, or as a player, you always remember that game you lost that you should have had. But you really don't remember some of those wins that you, you had. Well, I mean, I think the, the losses, you know, it, it ends things. I mean, a big yep. playoff game, stuff like that. The times you win that championship, you'll remember those feelings. I mean, that the feeling in the locker room and, and uh, you know, the energy that goes into a game like that, you'll never forget. But it's, off, you know, there's only so many times you can win that championship and have that be your last game. So a lot of your last impressions are those big losses. No, absolutely. What about you guys? I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that all the guys on our team are very competitive, and I think we have an attitude where we're a team where we hate to lose more than we like to win. And I think there's a big difference because, like, we just want to not lose so bad that it just seems to be a good result for us every time. So, um, and I, th I think, um, I mean, we didn't lose that many games this year, but um, those losses, we we're still, you know. Those tough losses we took against Cedar Rapids and and stuff, and for example, when we led and you know, yes, yeah. Um, yeah, that definitely uh, disturbs me. Yeah, you guys are a perfect three for three here tonight. Let's get to our last one. This is for you, Brett. We're gonna fast forward a year. Scottsdale, Arizona. You're in a steakhouse and waiting. While you're waiting, you grab a booth in the bar area. You see Wayne Gretzky walk in, and he also has entered the bar that is packed. You ask him if he wants to sit at your booth. He sits down and then tells you immediately that he does not. he's not in the mood for talking about hockey. What do you talk to Wayne Gretzky about? And it better not be his hot daughter. Because I knew that answer I mean, yeah, was coming up. I mean, I think I'd ask if she could join or maybe she's in the area. But, but uh, yeah, um, I don't know. That's a good question. I'd probably probably talk to him about his golf game. Here he's got a pretty good golf game, and maybe we could uh, hit the links. But uh, it'd be pretty hard not to talk about hockey, that's for sure. What do you think, Mark? Oh, I would definitely ask uh, about his daughter because um, <laughs> I'm I'm not a good golfer. Um, so yeah. I like it, Mark. Right to the point. Get right to that point. But you kind of like, wouldn't you want to just kind of try to sneak in a question here or there? Do you guys ever get to a point where you're like, I don't want to talk about hockey today. Let's talk about something else. I think, I think I'd ask him about the relationship with his dad because a, a Canadian boy growing up. I mean. Walter was around everywhere. I mean, he was so involved with the process and just probably talk, if you wouldn't talk hockey, probably talk about that process for him and just everything from then to now. 
What do you, what, just really quick, Pat, what would you talk about at the table with Wayne, Wayne Gretzky? I would struggle without the hockey. Like, I mean, it would be yeah. really difficult because, I mean, every, anything you'd want to bring up to him, a former teammate, anything like that, it's all wiped out. I mean, that's what we remember so much about him. So, I mean, you'd definitely be searching, you know. <laughs> well, at least Mark's prepared, right? Yeah, Mar- Mark's all set. <laughs> We maybe find out if he's a cigar smoker or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, you got to find some common ground. You just, I, I agree with you. I would have no clue. I'm not yeah, a conversationalist. So, well, I thank you guys for playing Perfect Four for Four. That would be that would be tough. We got to step out for another break. When we return, we're gonna.